Anna Eshoo is one of those congresswomen that we kind of feel like we all know because we've all had the great opportunity to work with her. So I hadn't really been on her website for a while, and I'll say if you want a mini vacation, go to Anna Eshoo's website. She's got this rolling banner that has uh, first, I think it, it looks like maybe it's Half Moon Bay, and then it's palm trees, and it t I really got kind of lost. I mean, I just stared at it for a while. I kept, you know, kept clicking back and clicking forward. So if you need to look like you're working but need a mini vacation, you know, then you can also go see the great stuff she's working on. She's also the most powerful wo uh, woman in Silicon Valley, according to the San Jose Mercury News, and I think we'd all probably agree with that uh, here in Washington. She's been representing Silicon Valley since 1992 in Congress, and is um, for those of you, that's, that's pre-internet. Uh, so she's worked on a lot of issues, but she has um, also, I'm sure, had her, heard a lot of great startup stories from the, the area that she's been. Even though um, she's been there kind of from the beginning of the internet, I don't think we really think of her as the godmother of the internet, but kind of the mama bear. Uh, for technology companies because you know that if, uh, I used to work for a company that was represented in Silicon Valley and if you want to mess with tech, you know you got to mess with Anna. So she's, she's a great person in, in all tech companies uh, corner. Along with the great work she's done in technology, she's also done fantastic work to ensure that the first responders from both the local all the way to the federal level have interoperability and the need um, to protect us all in an emergency. And we know with Spectrum uh, being a continuing issue and now becoming kind of a budget issue, that's a, that's a very important topic that she's done a lot of fantastic work on. She is the ranking minority member of Energy and Commerce and the, um, and the Subcommittee on Communications and, and Technology where a lot of us spend our time. She spent a tremendous amount of time ensuring high-speed, affordable broadband, protecting electronic privacy, freeing up more spectrum for emergencies, and she has been a champion of preserving an open internet. As Ms. Eshoo also, as I mentioned, is the co-chair of the Bicameral Congressional Internet Caucus, who is sponsoring today. And uh, please welcome Anna Eshoo. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's Mama Bear. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Shade, for your wonderful introduction. Uh, my staff uh, always hears me say this, but uh, when all these wonderful things are being said about me, I always wish my, uh, my children were in the audience. So uh, I don't know if they know what this mama is doing here, but uh, um, so we're fresh from the inauguration. I think uh, uh, yesterday was uh, a great day for America. It was a day of, uh, I think, enormous inspiration. Uh, being up on the podium uh, with the Congress and uh, uh, to see a young man, uh, president, uh, reelected and uh, uh, sworn in again uh, is, um, is momentous. And I think that uh, it reminded me, uh, it made, I mean, it was, I think, really filled with emotion. Uh, but one of the things that I couldn't help think of was uh, that it was uh, a great day for America. And uh, uh, the uh, one sentence that the president uh, said was that this was uh, our moment. So I think it's up to all of us working together uh, to make good on that promise that this is our moment uh, in America. I don't think there's uh, a sector, uh, a part of America that is more exciting um, than what the Internet Caucus and all the issues it represents uh, uh, for us to work on. Uh, so I'm delighted to be here with you. It's an honor to be here with you. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, uh, the wonderful leadership of uh, Tim Lorden, who's the executive director for the Internet um, Education Foundation, the IEF, uh, and his leadership uh, in guiding the Congressional Internet Caucus uh, Advisory Committee. It's very important. And it's an honor to be one of the House co-chairs along with uh, uh, my good friend and uh, really an outstanding member of Congress, uh, Bob Goodlett. And I know that uh, Senator Moran and Representative Scalise and Senator Leahy and Senator Thune are going to um, all be speaking to you this morning. So I want to congratulate all the early, early attendees. Uh, thank you for comprising an audience. Otherwise, I'd be talking to the chairs. So um, uh, uh, where are we going to go with all of this in, uh, in a new Congress? 
Uh, first of all, I think that the caucus is a, um, uh, a really highly valuable vehicle uh, for educating members on both sides of the aisle because this is bipartisan. Most frankly, these issues are not partisan at all. They're nonpartisan. Uh, but it's a very, very important vehicle to uh, educate members. And uh, for anyone that suffers from any kind of uh, frustration with these issues, I know that constituents ask me on a, a consistent basis, do other members even understand this? We have to remember all the different uh, corners and parts of our country uh, where uh, the issues that we work on uh, may not be uh, at the top of their agenda, but nonetheless, they need to understand it. Uh, you have to understand something before you can accept or reject it. So the role of the caucus in educating members on both sides of the aisle uh, on all of the issues, uh, ranging from cybersecurity to privacy to internet governance and the future of the broadband uh, is, is absolutely essential. And that's what the caucus does. And it, it may very well be the largest number of members belonging to any caucus, and there has to be, I don't know, over 100 caucuses uh, in the Congress. Uh, I think that this one has really established itself well and has an excellent reputation. As the pace of, um, of uh, new innovation accelerates, um, and there's no doubt that it continues uh, there's a, a new multiplier uh, that's applied uh, consistently uh, to this sector. Uh, it's essential for Congress and the FCC to ensure a legislative and regulatory environment that promotes competition, faster broadband, and the rollout of new technologies in key sectors of the economy, including telecommunications, energy, and healthcare, because this spans and touches everything, uh, which of course speaks to the enormous opportunity that this represents for our country. Uh, nearly 17 years ago, the 1996 Act uh, stated its intention to, quote, promote competition and reduce regulation in order to secure and encourage the rapid deployment of new telecommunication technologies. So in the years that have followed, uh, broadband emerged, uh, providing a gateway to innovative uh, bandwidth intensive applications like HD video, online uh, gaming, something I'm not too fond of, I don't like gaming, never have, never will, uh, video conferencing, and uh, much more. Yet according to the FCC, I think these are stunning figures for our country. There are 119 million Americans without a fixed broadband connection today and uh, 19 million who live in areas where no such service is available. So we have our work cut out for us. Uh, this can't be a source of pride to any of us. Uh, tomorrow, this conference is going to turn its attention uh, to the Internet Leadership Challenge and how sound Internet policy can help restore America to economic greatness. Uh, this is precisely the question we should be asking in the 113th Congress. And I think that this has to begin with a set of policies that promote greater competition. Our world is moving so rapidly uh, to wireless. We all know that. But without more spectrum, for mobile broadband, we risk stunting this exciting growth. As a scarce resource, uh, I think that we should all be thinking of spectrum um, as gold, because that's what it is. That's how, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, how highly valuable it is. Our policy decisions have to focus on maximizing both the consumer and economic benefits that are going to drive the next generation of wireless technologies. First, as we free up more spectrum for mobile broadband, the FCC should reform its spectrum screen. The process used to determine how much spectrum any carrier can hold in a given market. Part of this reform should include a recognition that uh, not all spectrum is created equally. Spectrum uh, under 
uh, one gigahertz, for example, is far more valuable and should be considered as such when evaluating how much spectrum a, a particular wireless uh, carrier holds. Second, uh, much attention has to be given to the IP transition, with some suggesting that we should throw out the rules that have helped pave the way for more competition. Uh, uh, now, to be clear, we're talking about an evolution in technology, one that doesn't change the need uh, for interconnection or last mile access for competitive providers. Uh, last month, the FCC announced an agency-wide technology transitions policy task force uh, to uh, tackle uh, this uh, very important topic. And I applaud the FCC's uh, effort, and I'm hopeful that my subcommittee uh, that Shane uh, referred to, uh, will provide equal attention to this critical issue. Third, consumer protection should be one of the basic tenets of any telecommunications policy or regulation. First and foremost, uh, this means preserving the basic rules of the road that the FCC adopted to ensure a free and open internet. Uh, there were um, there was a, an entire delegation representing the United States of America at the Wicket uh, Conference. And um, uh, this was uh, uh, the major item that was tucked into all of their briefcases as they traveled uh, to another part of the world. Um, and it seems to me that uh, if that's going to be the case, as we instruct other countries uh, that are not as open as our democracy, that this is an imprimatur of ours. So uh, should the court overturn the FCC's rules, I'll be prepared to introduce legislation clarifying the commission's authority to ensure a free and open internet. Um, and uh, while preventing the use of internet fast lanes or other discriminatory rules, whatever anyone comes up with to interfere with this, uh, I think that we need to be very clear about our nation's policy in this uh, key area. Finally, I hope the, uh, uh, that our subcommittee will give serious consideration to the future of video. The internet has revolutionized the way in which we consume video content uh, on our television, our computers, and our mobile devices. Uh, for example, in June, and this is such a, a fascinating statistic, uh, the Netflix uh, monthly viewing exceeded one billion hours for the first time ever. This is remarkable uh, for a company that has grown from just 600,000 subscribers in 2002 uh, to more than 30 million subscribers worldwide today. Um, I want to ensure that constituent companies like Netflix continue to grow and uh, that they're not hindered uh, by discriminatory caps or other tactics that deny consumers the freedom and the flexibility to stream video content whenever and whenever they want. So throughout all of these efforts, uh, my focus will remain on championing policies that advance innovation competition, real competition, and ensure that uh, we have a vibrant sector uh, that benefits consumers and our economy for many years to come. So um, uh, again, it's uh, more than a pleasure to be with you this morning. I thank you for being part of this and all of the sponsors that are a part of this, uh, and to everyone that has really participated uh, in the uh, uh, in the, uh, the work of the caucus. Uh, it's not just up to the members. Uh, we, need, um, uh, we need people that are a part of the private sector, that are instructive to us, uh, that are clear about where they're going, but also uh, what I call the weeds, what's getting in the way of innovation. Um, this particular sector of our economy, I think, holds uh, the most promise for America. And it is, uh, it represents the genius of America. It's one of the finest, if not now today, uh, the greatest export 
around the world. And as I said, the internet is, uh, uh, is, is a bookend of democracy. And we see how it has become a tool for those that are struggling uh, to establish democracies around the world. Uh, so it's not just the weeds of what goes on at the FCC, what we take up at the committee. I think we always have to think uh, of it in a very broad, large way and uh, what it represents of the best of America. And I want to make sure that uh, we continue doing that. And the innovation that is the mark of my congressional district and uh, a growing mark of other uh, places in our country uh, uh, continues uh, to be exactly that. Uh, it's an honor to be with you, and uh, it's an honor to be a member of Congress with all that uh, is said about the Congress and how it has not distinguished itself in many ways. Um, being on that podium yesterday, I couldn't help but think of, uh, of my ancestors my mother and father who are now in heaven and I know were looking down um, and seeing that gathering as we renewed our democracy and what it means, what the framers set forth, uh, I had to pinch myself and say, what a privilege, what a privilege to be a part of this, to be an active participant in it and that uh, the people of my district have uh, renewed their contract with me, so to speak, uh, for two more years to move forward and to make optimum use of the time uh, that is given to us. So I look forward to working with all of you. There's so many friends in the audience, and uh, I thank you for that. We have a, um, uh, a markup uh, shortly, but uh, if, uh, if you want to take a few questions, I'd be happy to, um, sure. Good Hi, morning. I'm Mike Nelson with uh, Bloomberg Government, and I also teach yes. at Georgetown. I uh, want to thank you for being the leadoff speaker the day after the inauguration, and really want to thank you for all the leadership you've provided at the Internet thank, Caucus. Thank you. Thank you. When I worked on, on the Hill in the White House, at least three quarters of my achievements were the stupid policies I prevented from be happening in this area of the Internet. Mm -hmm. As I look around the world, I see a lot of stupid policies being proposed. And the U.S. government has played a really important role in helping push back against some of these ideas. Mm -hmm. You mentioned WICKED, but we have national governments that are trying to eliminate anonymity on the net. Mm -hmm. Just a couple days ago, the French started talking about taxing collection of personal data yes. mm -hmm. and making big data much more difficult to use. How can we be sure that the Congress will provide enough money to the efforts at the FCC, the State Department, NTIA, and elsewhere to help get the other rest of the world doing the right thing for the internet. Because this is a global medium, and what mm -hmm. Korea does, and France does, and Russia yes. does impacts us. And yet congressmen and senators don't always see the value in travel and talking to other countries. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful question, and an important one. Uh, first of all, uh, I was very pleased, and I'm sure you all were as well, uh, that there wasn't any daylight between uh, the legislative branch um, on a bicameral basis uh, and the executive branch of our government uh, relative to uh, the position of the United States of America uh, going into the conference. And th that was very, very important. That's very important because if we're divided, then how can we carry a united message? And so uh, I wouldn't underestimate uh, uh, you know, what took place, uh, especially amidst all of the, uh, the chaos uh, of the previous Congress. And uh, I don't need to get into that because we all know uh, what that looked like um, and uh, how depressing that is to the American people. Uh, moving forward, I think that uh, we have to, uh, in a... Uh, in a season of austerity. Uh, I say to my constituents, we can't tax our way to prosperity and we can't cut our way to prosperity. There has to be a balance in all of this. And so as we enter, uh, you know, uh, begin a new Congress, we have to be highly mindful 
of the investments that have always paid off for our country. The investments that, this isn't something that's new. Uh, I don't know how many of you uh, read uh, Tom Friedman's book uh, where he uh, spoke of, wrote about uh, the four pillars that, uh, that have always served our nation well and that when we invest in them, there's an upward tra uh, trajectory. And when we don't, there's a downward um, line. And the four, not in any particular order, are immigration, capital formation, education, and research and development. And so it seems to me that we have to keep returning to those and saying these are the areas of our national budget that are true national values and that as we look for opportunities across the federal budget, that there has to be, there have to be parts of it uh, that really are sacred to us. I mean, we can't just give lip service to this. So uh, those areas need to be funded. Uh, why? Because they represent our future. And uh, there are others that have come, and I've seen it over and over again in Silicon Valley, uh, delegations that have come to study, to see what the ingredients have been for our success. And if we're the ones that, uh, you know, let that go, um, then it will be a march to folly for our country. Uh, this isn't just about my congressional district, um, as much as it is. Uh, uh, this is about our nation, and that's why I said we need to broaden our thinking. So um, uh, I think that, um, uh, well, that's what I think. And uh, uh, thank you for offering uh, not only the question, but the experience that you've had. Um, and, and you know when you say there are stupid ideas on the part of government and whatever, again, hearkening back to uh, 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 about 24 hours ago, um, and the, the president speaking of the, uh, what the framers had set forward, there's always a frustration about the wheel of government and how it turns. I've always said there are two clocks on the wall. You know, one is government time and one is regular time. But you know, the framers actually, when you study what they did, um, they set our system up so that the wheel does not move quickly because there are a lot of bad ideas. There are a lot of bad ideas. Some of them are dangerous. Uh, and some of them are luring in terms of the political moment. Uh, but uh, uh, what they shaped and uh, 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 why they shaped it the way they did has great meaning to me. So uh, that's why debate is very important. Not food fights, real debate. Uh, that's why oversight of the Congress is so important. That's why my uh, making sure I'm always at the hearings, no matter how long they are. You learn from uh, the people that come to testify. That's all part of this. So um, thank you for what uh, you said, the experience that you bring to it, and the question that you posed. Markup. Markup. Imagine, we're starting the year with a markup. Thank you, everyone, and I wish you every success, and uh, make sure you keep working with us. Thank you.